Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Bruce Hurwitz. I am one of the co-chairs of the Chambers Entrepreneurship Committee, which is sponsoring or organizing today's event. I want to welcome all of you, and before I go any further, I want to give the regrets of my co-chair, Ron Pouchowitz, who is not able to join us today. First, I want to thank Eisner Amper for hosting, and they don't always get the credit they deserve. So I want to, by name, thank, from the chamber, Laura, Mads, Nick, and Matteo for all of the logistical support without which none of the chamber's events would be possible. I also want to recognize Jimmy Newsom, who agreed on very short notice to record today's event. And I, of course, want to thank all of my fellow committee members for their assistance. Two housekeeping items. First, please turn off your cell phones. Mm -hmm. And second, you have an evaluation form on your chair. The Entrepreneurship Committee is in some ways new, we want to make sure we're doing things right, and most importantly, that we are meeting the needs and wants of the community. So please take a minute and fill out the form, just leave it on your chair at the end, and we will collect them. This is the first of our quarterly events. Upcoming events will include a program during Marketing Week NYC on excellence and customer service. In September, we're going to have an event on branding. And in November, we will have a, an entrepreneurship boot camp. You will be able to follow all these events at the Chamber's website, which is manhattancc.org. We're also going to have special events. For example, there'll be one on access to capital and another on cybersecurity. So when on the forum we ask you for your ideas and suggestions for future events, we're serious. Today's event is the leader in you. I used to teach a course on leadership, on entrepreneurship, excuse me, and one of the classes was on leadership. And I would begin the class by asking the students what or who is a leader? And they would respond with the attributes of a leader. And I tell them it's a good answer, but wrong. The question was, who is a leader? There's only one definition of a leader. A leader is someone with followers. If you don't have followers, you're not a leader. <laughs> and everyone has, all leaders have two types of followers. Followers by coercion, who have no choice in the matter, and followers by conviction. They want to follow the person because they respect him or her. They like him. They want to emulate him. He is a role model. And that describes today's speaker, Mike Wolf. He is a mentor. More than anything else, he enjoys mentoring. He stays in the back. He has helped us enormously with the reconfiguration of the Entrepreneurship Committee. Never seeks the public spotlight. That's a leader. So you are going to learn in the next hour from a master. And it is my pleasure to introduce Mike Wolf. Thank you, Bruce. You recited that just like we rehearsed it, man. It was wonderful. <laughs> and good morning. It was interesting what Bruce just said, not to contradict him, but he said, a leader is someone who has followers. Don't be confused. A leader can have no followers except thyself. You can be leading yourself in the direction you'd like to pursue in your career, in your life, in your organization. 
It's kind of an interesting process. It's what you feel and what you do. Has anyone read the book Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell? Good. Uh. Well, today you're going to hear, in a short period of time, a number of tipping points. Identify with them, because I'm sure you have tipping points in your life. For those of you who haven't had the pleasure of reading it, it's one of three or four he's done. Second one was Blink, Outliers, etc., etc. But read Tipping Point. It's, uh, it demonstrates for you how certain things have started when you least expect them. But when they do start, be cognizant of it and embrace it. Very important we think about that. So, who is Mike Wolf? We purposely did not put a dossier together on myself, a bio, purposely. Actually, I was disappointed they didn't have my name outside on the marquee, but that's okay. <laughs> But to have the opportunity, I think about Les Mis. Who am I? Remember that song? Good. So who am I? Mike Wolf. I'm an entrepreneur. I've started two companies. I've sold two companies. I help young entrepreneurs and mature entrepreneurs get their act together. As an organization, we also help to take them to the market. We also help them to introduce them to people who can be allies for them and help them raise money, rain financing for their companies and put business plans together. And the nice part is I don't have to do all that because many of you out here do that. That's your business. We just need to know your areas of specialization and help connect the dots. That's what the ambassadors do as well. And my sidekick in all this today, my appendage, is Ariana. Say hello to Ariana. <laughs> this is going to go pretty quickly today because there's a lot of information to impart on you. For a number of years, I lived in China. Actually lived in a place called Formosa, which was not called Formosa anymore today, it's called Taiwan. So I did have the pleasure of speaking a little bit of Mandarin and then speaking Tagalog, which is the native language of the Filipinos. But getting there and living there for a number of years, I realized that, and by the way, I was working for our security and intelligence department, our being our country. But having the opportunity to meet with people for the first time in foreign lands, learning about their culture, the way they do things, I never let myself become or think, thought about becoming the ugly American. I needed to make sure that I interfaced with people, learn from them. And that's very important when you think about the hallmark of a leader. Not to be dominant in everything one does, but to have the opportunity to share, to listen, to play back, and to get to know people for whom they are, not for whom you want them to be. And what do you demonstrate? So by a show of hands, how many feel today that they are a leader? Okay, thank you. How many are here because you'd like to know how to become a more effective leader? Oh, outstanding. So stay with that a minute. Ariana, I feel I turn to you like Vanna. Okay. <laughs> and so first, when you think about and consider leadership, who comes to mind? Who do you know personally? Who do you know that might not even be alive or with us today, but you feel he or she was or is an effective leader? Please raise your hand and let us know. Yes, ma'am. Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Did you watch the movie? Uh, Selma. Yes. No, not yet. Selma's wonderful. Good portrayal. Good thing to see. Dr. Oz, yes. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Okay, thank you. And you didn't know him personally, did you, Doctor? <laughs> no, okay. Alex? Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. My dad. And yeah. I knew him well. <laughs> Good, thank you. And one more. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Hillary Clinton. Okay. Let's go back to those of you who raised those issues. 
First, Eleanor Roosevelt. Who said Eleanor Roosevelt? Why? What was it and what attributes do you feel Eleanor Roosevelt had? Well, she carved a new way for women. She, uh, her work with the UN was extraordinary, looking at human rights and the, and sort of the four prisms of what everyone should have the standard. Mm -hmm. And the reinventing of society, really looking at how everyone has a right to a certain alienal existence. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jane. And what would you say her leadership style was? To see it for herself. Hmm. To, to identify. Good. Thank you. Second one. Who came with the next one? Yes, ma'am. What is your name? Teresa. Teresa. Um, he, Martin Luther King led uh, a large group of oppressed people into uh, more equality. It cost him his life, but he led by example. Mm -hmm. Leading by example, commitment, the inner strength to continue on, right? Thank you, Teresa. Next. Who is the next one? Dr. Raz, go ahead. Um, I believe he was a very humble leader. Who? Uh, Lincoln? Lincoln? Yes. yes. And uh, he, start, he was uh, one of the first that stopped uh, differentiation between people and color. And he started to make things that they would still enjoy doing. It. So. And you didn't know him personally, did you? Okay. Thank you. How about Bill Gates, Alex? Well, when everyone was convinced that computers would be reserved, you know, to entire rooms and for the domains of scientists and engineers, uh, you know, he was convinced that we should all have a computer and, you know, he hacked away in his garage and then he ushered in what we now know is the age of the personal computer. What else did he do for school children? He, democratize access to learning. Mm -hmm. Try to put one on everyone's desk, right? I had the pleasure last July of meeting with His Royal Highness the Round Crin Crown Prince of Norway and he and I spent some fireside chat together at the United Nations. And I asked him what his passion was, what he was doing now, and he said I'm trying to teach as many children around the world about ethics. And then he said, and you can't just to teach the children about it, you have to teach the parents and the educators about it. So this has become his new passion. I was so grateful to have that time. Your dad. My dad, uh, we were new to this country, I'm Barbadian. And uh, it was difficult uh, getting the jet ski. But my dad uh, was a good electrician. He's also a good photographer. And we learned uh, through him, if you approach the arts, you can open doors to people of feeling more comfortable and talking to you through the arts. And you can expand and make your future go. Mm -hmm. Go in many different mm -hmm. directions. So I believe your dad was also articulating the opportunities to surround yourself with like-minded people, Absolutely. people who wanted to learn, right? Yes. People who have a thirst and desire and hunger to make a difference. Yes. Are you here to make a difference? Absolutely. Wonderful. By this one hour going today, I promise you, you will see new traits that you can make a difference. Great. How's that sound? Wonderful. If that's an outcome, you'll appreciate it, right? Absolutely. Good. Okay. Hillary Clinton, what about her? I think that she, as a woman, personally took on uh, the challenge of advocating for certain causes, for health care, for understanding, for not only the U.S., but globally. And Thank you. Thank you. Very insightful. Appreciate your commentary. All right. To start with. This is a time of achievement. That's why I believe you're here, to achieve something maybe that you haven't, something you're shooting for, something you want to aspire to, something you've read about, uh, people you're identifying with, and inwardly you say, hey, I'd like to be like that person. From what I know about that person, don't know them personally, but I'd like to be a high achiever, more so than I am today. So folks tell me, what do I need to do to make that happen? Uh, very rarely have more people had the, had been able to accomplish more things 
more difficult, different fields than they're accomplishing today. That's the environment we're in because it's not only in America, it's around the world this is happening. Every continent, people are learning. More money, more resources are being put to use to help people learn, to aspire to take the next steps in their personal careers. And they surround themselves not with the, with the proverbial cynics and skeptics who tell them why they shouldn't do something, but rather why they should, and become an advocate for them, a supporter, and in many cases, a mentor to show them the way. There have never been more opportunities to turn your dreams into reality than there are right now. And by the way, part of the Chamber of Commerce provides that opportunity in kind of a small way, but hopefully in a much larger way because of the resources that are available. Take advantage of them. Today's presentation is aimed at showing you ways in which you can improve your leadership style, take it personally, Take it personally for this reason. It's the inner you. It's the things you tell yourself on the inside that hopefully you start to become on the outside. It's your belief system. It's the way you conduct yourself. Your goals need to be realized and your full potential can come across in the success model that you're putting for. No matter who you are, no matter what situation, you have within you right now, now by the way, this is me telling you, these are my thoughts coming forth to you, internalize it. You don't have to follow my words, but internalize it as a leader that if it sounds right, if it sounds good to you, embrace it. Make some of these yours. Because at the end of the day, it's all about you. You matter to yourself and hopefully to many others. You have the potential to exceed in many levels of accomplishment that previously you really haven't thought through in depth. And I'm going to lead you there now. You can be, you can have more to do, more perhaps than you ever imagined before. And all these things need to be learned and put to use. Now, to do that, we need to have some goals, your personal goals. So, Vanna, oh, Mariana, is going to take some wonderful quick notes so we can play them back later. Anybody want to start us off? Look inside yourself. Because remember, in psychology, the inner you starts to become the external you. It's what you feel on the inside that hopefully you will start to exude on the outside. It's a reflection of you. So, Give me an idea. What are your goals? Give me one goal that you have for today. For like, yes, sir. To help bring out the best in people. To help bring out the best, best in people. Okay? Maximize that potential. Is that fair? Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. I would like to expand the charity that I run to help underprivileged youth to a broader range of you would like to expand the charity that you run to help the youth? To help more youth in the city uh, get self-esteem and realize their Help them develop, help youth yes, develop self-esteem. Every time you say this, I'm not being, you know, making a joke here, but every time you say youth, I think about Vito and youths <laughs> and my cousin Vinny, right? What are these youths doing here? Yes, ma'am. Right ahead. You, did you have your hand up? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my goal is to uh, help youth uh, combat uh, uh, bullying and abuse through education, entertainment, and the arts. Wonderful. And that's a field that you spend a lot of time in, isn't it? Yes. Good. Thank you for sharing that. Yes? Hold it, I'm coming over. We all want to hear you. Go ahead. Um, during two years to start my green company and help the entire universe go green. Wonderful. That's your dream? It's my goal. You go. And what are you doing right now about it? Now I'm working for my husband's 
company. He owns the company. It's an energy efficient lighting company. Everybody here, if you want to network with me after the meeting, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you haven't yet, there is a company down in Dumbo. Have you been down to Dumbo all? Dumbo is down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. The company is called Green Desk. Call them up, email them, get a chance to meet some of the people there. Very fascinating what they do. Anyone else want to share the goal? Yes, sir. Uh, I want to start a green energy revolution. A green evo energy evolution? Revolution. Revolu Why don't you guys meet together afterwards? <laughs> Here's your first connectivity, man. Let me tell you. He wants to start a green energy revolution. Oh, there you go. No, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, we talk about, this is good, because we talk about attitudes, and the ideal is to make things happen rather than hope they're going to happen. Because we can sit around and hope, but here you have an audience of like-minded people, high energy, great creativity, good thoughts coming forward. Connect, meet, network. But here, right away, we got two. If you guys don't meet, something's wrong. Yes, Errol? Because um, I do mobile apps, and I want to make sure that uh, all small businesses, they will enjoy the mobile app revolution. The mobile app rev revolution is wonderful. Thank you. Yes, sir? A big part of our corporation is called Greenfinity. Greenfinity? Is that for infinity? Good. Smart. Love to know more about that. So now, look inside yourself. Consider this question for a moment, and don't consider it long and try to manipulate words. Tell us what's on your mind. Tell us what you're feeling, and that is, what defines your leadership attributes? When you feel and think about yourself as a leader, what defines you? Who are you? What attributes do you have as a leader today that you'd like to share? Hey, you know, there is no wrong answer, folks. It's just a question for you. Yes, ma'am. I'm a teacher and motivator, and I like to help people be successful. Thank you. A teacher and motivator and likes to help people be successful. Yes, ma'am. I'm told I'm a catalyst for creativity, and I, may, I get things done. Catalyst for creativity and get things done. She's told she is. Right. Is it I'm part of your belief? I'm, I'm accepting it and I'm trying to embrace it and I'm trying to learn more about it. And, <laughs> um, I, I've been doing it and things that you say, I do this thing about mind, body, spirit that right. uh, starts with the thought in your head. And, and I'm applying it to what is manifesting around me. Do you study yoga as well? I do. I knew it. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. It's good to be open like this. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm an Army officer, and I know situational leadership is yes, very sir. important. Okay. Depending on different situations and the people you are around you, you need to lead them in different ways. Wonderful. That is very, very important. And what defines you personally as a leader? What is that skill you have? I, ha I certainly possess this skill because I've been trying to lead people in very, very different situations, and I know how important it is. Uh, I think my main attitude is probably empathy for my employees. Wonderful. Does empathy also cross over to compassion? Yeah, it, it might, yeah. It might do that. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I believe that leaders are breeders. You have to read books. You have to educate yourself continuously. No matter how high you are, if you're in the first place, you have to be questioning yourself. Good. So what is your first name? Michaelo. Michaelo. Nice. Where's that from? Ukraine. Ukraine. So, Michaelo, that's a wonderful thought process as an attribute, being a voracious reader. But then there are other senses we have, and the second one that comes to mind is auditory, being a great listener. Is that not the hallmark of a good leader as well? And the third one is visualization, being able to see things with clarity. Because we can be a great reader and capture and remember things going forward, we can also see the pictures forming in front of us and bring those back into our memory. And then there are those that are high visuals, which I am, that we can bring a picture back and all of a sudden re-put it on a new canvas, if you will. But it's good for you. Okay. If you can start 
to achieve your leadership goals in this one hour this morning, which is a little bit less already, because Bruce took all this time. Um, <laughs> what would it mean to you if we promised that in one hour we would give you some tools, some ingredients for the recipe for your success to make a difference? What would that mean to you, anyone? Would you be encouraged about that? Would you take it seriously and do something with it? Here's two people we've never met before today who already know they're in green space. If they don't connect afterwards, shame on them. Because there's a connectivity already. So why not take advantage of it? A five minute conversation to exchange business cards is valuable. And you didn't have to pay for the lead. You know, it's there. <laughs> Thank you, okay. The purpose of the presentation today is also to identify differences between leaders and managers. So I try to do this in the most simplistic way, and I know you'll get it once you see my definition of it. Also, participants will be able to define the differences between leaders and managers and the characteristics of successful leaders. Not just leader, we like those who have demonstrated ongoing success and apply this to be more effective and improve your communications to yourself and within your respective organizations, families, etc. A leader, from my definition, is someone who does the right things. Manager is someone who does things right. It's a play on words, folks, that's all it is. But you're laughing because it hits home, right? What do you feel about it? Tell us. What do you think about this? Make sense? Yeah. Easy to understand. Yes, Teresa. A great quote in the subway, a leader doesn't drive the train, they lay the track. Well, I hope I could agree with something like that since we've had some very unfortunate train accidents lately. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I know what the statement means. But it would be nice to eradicate from my mind and a lot of minds what recently has taken place. Anyone? Yes, sir. I feel like uh, leaders, they're more involved in the process. But yeah. managers, they, they make people do things. Good. They don't be part of the process. They just monitor it. Yeah, so Bruce Hurwitz said, Mike is the kind of guy that likes to sit in the background, listen to things, then come off over with some suggestions and recommendations of how to do things smarter, better, get more people engaged. Well, I do that because that's what I feel. I feel that's my importance, not to be out front and taking the show like I am today. I very rarely do this, but it's good. If I would have thought this through more effectively, I would have put my tap shoes on today. But <laughs> Both roles are important to any organization. I do a lot with an organization called the G20 Foundation. The G20, some of you might know, are the leaders of many countries around the world. The foundation is the underpinnings of those leaders, but also the foundation is also comprised of youth, is the word again, youth leaders in those countries. And we meet on a regular basis via Skype and we talk about the issues that the presidents leave with that they need to get enacted in the different countries. And I'll tell you this, it's wonderful when you're combining your creativity and, and thought process with similar kinds of like-minded people who want to get things done and they feel their respective countries, in this case companies, have empowered them to make a difference. So if you internalize this, in my mind, the hallmark of an effective leader the hallmark of an effective manager is to realize that within you, you have the potential to do it. You can challenge it, and I don't doubt your challenge, to say many companies don't provide this type of support. Many companies today are not online or aligned with you to get this done. But they will be more and more moving in the right direction, and I request that you keep moving that ball forward because there's nothing wrong with it. And you don't have to be hard-nosed about it, just be creative with it, the same way that everyone here 
has that feeling of creativity to make something happen. The characteristics that I share with you is for a leader to have a clear vision and agenda of what they want to commit. What are they committed to? A clear vision and a clear agenda. Not just to talk about the vision, to say, this is what I feel, this is what I hope. Have an agenda to bottom line it and say, if given the opportunity, here's what I'd like to do. Because just saying something goes in one ear and out the other. If you'd be able to put a sub line under that or two or three bullets and say, here's the agenda I can follow because, again, there are no two people in this room with a similar DNA. We all have our own thoughts, our own creativity, and somebody needs to be near you and around you to bring that out and listen to what you have to say. This is what this program is about today as a starting point to bring that creativity forward so we can listen to each other. And by the way, there's also no such thing in my life as a silly idea. We welcome ideas, the opportunity to listen to you, to understand it. And if we don't understand it, we'll just ask you, can you explain that a little more? We want to get your thoughts because that is so important. Otherwise, it becomes a textbook, and we read a lot of textbooks. Well, I want you to walk away today with something so meaningful that you can put into your system today, your personal system, your company, etc. Also, communicate the visions to others. Key word now is to inspire them. Inspire people to take action. As a leader, that's part of our role. And to inspire others. And you don't have to do it by demonstrating that you're a leader because you have a title. To get others to understand it, let them internalize it. You know you're a leader. You have the title. You have the, the credentials to do this. Now let's get others on the bandwagon. But by telling them what to do, but by giving them guidance of how they can do it. And if you're not doing this today, just think about more how more impactful you can become. Because again, it's within you. It's the inner you that starts to become the external you. It's what you think, what you feel, what you do that people are seeing all the time. You don't have to tell them. It doesn't have to be in script. You don't have to send out a communication, look at me. No, it's not about. It's about you as the leader. And also able to communicate and be trusted. Trust is an operative word. It's a common thread that's woven through the fabric of effective leadership is trust. How many people around you do you trust? How many trust you? If there's any doubt at any time, swing it back and I'll show you what to do about it. Characteristics of leaders also include to know themselves, know what they feel, know how they come across to other people, know their style, their behavior style. Are they dominant? Are they detached? Are they dependent? Because every style is different, but it's how you come across with others as a leader that makes a difference. Whether it's the Eleanor Roosevelt's, whether it's the Martin Luther King's, whether it's Abe Lincoln. Whether it's Bill Gates, how'd I do with that? Those are the things that make a difference to you. Make people feel significant as part of a team, part of your team, part of your company team, part of the overall team at the Manhattan Chamber. Make people feel significant, not that they just signed up to be a member, but make them feel significant as your dad has made you feel through the years. Is that right? Absolutely. Good. Um, view your work as exciting. Be relevant. Exciting meaning that you're out there making it happen. Otherwise, we hope it happens, and it ain't going to happen. I hope it. Leadership is power, but power can go both ways. Power can be negative in an attitude of, I win, you lose. Leaders have hard heads. They might feel that I'm a leader now so I can tell people what to do. Wrong. That is not the hallmark of an effective leader by telling people what to do. You said it yourselves a little while ago. It's to motivate. It's to stimulate. It's to listen better. It's to dialogue in smart ways on many, many common grounds. So you're listening. 
You're learning more about the people you're working with, those who are counting on you to guide them. Oftentimes we forget about that just because we have titles. But there are younger people, there are people, forget the age for a moment, there are people who are not at your level who want to learn from you. And you know what? We don't think about this often enough, but they're watching you. They're watching and seeing you, how you act as a leader, and probably inspired to say, hey, I'd like to get there also. What do I need to do to get to that position in my career, in my life? And by the way, who do I go to help me and guide me accordingly? Well, I feel part and parcel of the mechanism of the Manhattan Chamber helps to do that. You just have to know who to go to. Leaders use their power in positive ways too, but you have to always identify self-control. Otherwise, you get in a telling mode and you start your conversations off in, well, let me tell you what I did. Not important. That's part of your dossier. Let me tell you what I did. Answer it or talk to people in this way. Let me suggest that you consider the following. Words become critical. I understand what you're saying and understand what your commentaries are. Let me suggest you consider it in this way. Because there are words people often use and they don't realize it until it's later on they hear themselves. The words are me, I. Put that aside. It's we. It's us. Not the I's and the me's. You own your title as a leader. But don't throw it out to people. Let them understand that you can come down a couple of pegs and be with them to listen to them more intently, to guide them accordingly, and never use the word should. There are too many shoulds out there. You should do this. You should do that. Let me make a suggestion to you. And take the word in your vocabulary, think out of your vocabulary immediately. Change it for one other word instead of saying, I think. Because oftentimes we wouldn't hear ourselves, we say it so often. Well, I think, I think, I think. Change it to where I believe. It's a totally different feeling that I believe in this rather than I think. Because you, don't be looked up, you won't be looked upon as a leader or a business leader if you keep saying, I think. The interpretation of I think is you're not sure. But I believe is dominant. I believe is part of your fabric. Much more strength associated with belief. We encourage team spirit. I knew nothing about the culture, behaviors, and attitudes of people in Taiwan when I got there until I started to spend time with them. And how did I learn? I listened. I walk into companies as a consultant, and the first thing I do is to get to know people, to talk with them, to understand what they've done, what works, understand what they'd like to do. Because unless I have the entire picture, I can't be of value. Unless you have an entire picture in front of you, how can you be of value? Just because you have a past and the credentials of what you've done doesn't make it work for everybody. Take the time to listen. People owe that. You owe that to people too. To say, I'm going to listen to what you have to say. You know what you can do. You don't have to bring it up at the beginning of any conversation or every conversation. Listen to what people do and then come out and say, based upon what you're saying, let me make some suggestions to you, not let me tell you what to do. Too many leaders fall into the trap because they take leadership as an ego trip. And I'm very counter with that. Don't take it as an ego trip. You've earned the right to be who you are. You've earned the right to be a leader. Use it to your strategic advantage both today and in the foreseeable future. You will help yourself and others around you because they're watching you. Big Brother is watching you. you get uh, sorry. For those who remember the book. <laughs> we encourage team spirit and to support our subordinates. They're looking all the time. And the more successful they can be, you, you, they don't have to use power to dominate. They use it as being part of the team rather than up on the podium leading the team. Now, I want to talk about 
factors affecting leadership. The circumference of this kind of weird shape revolving ball, which is not, uh, is corporate culture. Let it be said that culture, again, from Mike Wolf's determination of culture, is comprised of two key issues. People talk about business culture, corporate culture, individual culture. It is comprised of two issues, attitudes and behaviors. It's how you adjust your attitude and what behavior you'd like to see in the people that you mentor and support and lead that leads and helps to change a culture of an organization. Is there a defined culture in the companies and organizations you work for? Can you sit here today and articulate what that culture is? Are you aligned with that culture? Because if you are not, there's a learning curve here. To make it effective rather than to challenge the culture of an organization, not to say it has to be so ingrained in everybody, but at least support it for the time being until changes can be made. But again, make certain you understand that that culture might have been around for many years. Doesn't mean it can't change. Technology changes, culture changes, people change. But make sure you can align with it. Don't try to come in and change things immediately. Work with it until you get yourself known and you get respected within your respective organizations. What are the superiors' expectations of you? And what are their experiences? How did they get to be where they are today? How did you get to be where you are today? You're the vertex here. You're the center point of this wheel. You're the one who they're counting on to make things happen. And what about your effectiveness? Not just you as a leader in title, but as you said before, what are your attributes as a leader? How do you take that now and overlay it with and connect it with all these other attributes, the subordinates, the leaders around you today? What are the job requirements that you have as a leader? Have they been so defined that you can talk about them without having to read them? Do you know what they are? Do you live them on a day-to-day -day basis? Do people around you know what your qualities are and qualifications are to be an effective leader? And by the way, are you measured on it? Are your superiors measuring you on your performance as a leader? And they do that on a regular basis so you know where you stand. Rather than to challenge the issues, it's almost like Mayor Ed Koch years ago used to say, how am I doing? He wanted the public to answer the question. He wanted to know if people felt he's doing the right thing. Nothing wrong with that, as long as you're willing to take criticism. If you're not, we got a problem. We don't want a leader who can't take criticism, who just wants to be told the wonderful rosy things rather than the circumference. Anybody here ever go through something called a 360 evaluation? Okay. So a 360 evaluation is this. It's the evaluation of people you work with, people you're connected with, who are able to openly and confidently talk about you and what they think about you. Are you effective as a leader? What they feel your hallmarks are, your strengths are, your weaknesses are, where changes could be made. Again, we have to accept that because they're our colleagues. And we can't say, hey, you don't know me. And you get defensive. And it becomes a negative conversation rather than an open, positive conversation that we all learn from. Be willing to accept it. Go back to change again. Change, in my mind, is one of the only constants we have around us today. I would suggest that you consider the changes that you've been through, personally, organizationally, and the changes that you feel are happening now in your own organizations. I would suggest you also consider the following. What do you feel about change? Do you negate it? Do you welcome it? If you welcome change, great. Do you accept it? Think about that. Do you embrace it as a good thing? And last, but certainly not least, 
is do you invite it? Do you actually invite change to say, I'm very comfortable with the status quo. I like things the way they are. Or can you make a difference on an ongoing basis by inviting change? It's a very healthy thing. But oftentimes people don't do it because they feel, what if they're wrong? What if people interpret this in the wrong way and not the way you intended? So you make the correction. It's like making a, cross, a, a course correction on the track you're on. <clears throat> and this is a wonderful track. So invite the change, embrace it, talk to people about it, and be part of it. Demonstrate how change can be healthy and happy for people around you. Show your enthusiasm. A smile of a leader goes a long way and is easier and more encouraging than walking around with a frown all the time. How many in this room have ever been videotaped? Good. Videotaping is a very important thing, as long as you're willing afterwards, number one, to see yourself. <laughs> because what's the first thing that happens when people see themselves after? Oh my God, is that me? Oh, look how tight my coat is. Oh, look, oh my, oh, I, 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 never, I never knew I'd do this kind of stuff, you know? And I, oh, I didn't, why is that? That's nervous energy. That's okay. It's nervous energy. And there is something that goes through each of our bodies, and it's a chemical. You can't turn it off. You can't turn it on like you can't force it. The chemical is adrenaline. It affects us in so many different ways. The ideal is to learn how it affects you and what you, what you can do about it. That's why having some colleagues, people around you to let you know, so you won't get upset when it happens. You won't get overly excited because it spikes energy. That's what adrenaline does. And you don't know how it's going to affect you. Many years ago, it was about years ago, um, so, you, <laughs> so you know, I was giving a talk to 9,400 people at the Dallas Convention Center. And my face was on three simultaneous huge screens around the center. So I couldn't deviate with my eyes because I'd see myself. <laughs> but I knew what I had to do. But the adrenaline kicked in, and I thought I had control of it. And the adrenaline kicked in for me in the following way. My hands started to sweat profusely. And they were dripping. <laughs> so, so what was I doing? I realized it. Thank God it wasn't too late. But I kept putting my hands in my pockets and wiping them. I thought, but people weren't even seeing it. I knew it, but they weren't seeing it. So oftentimes, when adrenaline affects you, a lot of people don't know it. They can't see it. But you can. You can feel it. And all I'm saying is through practice and experience, because we do a lot with videotaping in our firm. We do a lot, hopefully, going forward with many of the programs at the chamber to understand, to have you see yourself, how others might see you. And to say, oh my God, did I do that? And yes, it was you. But if you like to control it, we can demonstrate ways, promises to go forward. Uh, peers and expectations and behaviors they have of you. You want to know what they are, and if you don't know, ask them. If you don't have a 360 in your own, ask them. They'll tell you. Wanting to know this information is paramount for you to move forward and take it as true. And also subordinates, expectations, and behaviors. We must know what they are. As leaders, we must know what they are. As mentors, as counselors, as, av as advisors, how can we help somebody if we don't know? How can you walk into a prospective client and tell him or her all the wonderful things your company can do with your product or service if you don't know what the heck they need? It's just reading a book. Learn what people are doing. Ask them these very salient questions about themselves, about their business, what's happening, what worked in the past, what didn't work in the past, and internalize that for yourself. What's worked for you? What hasn't worked for you? What would you like to make a change in? There's no single correct answer or pattern of style. The effectiveness of styles is determined on the needs of the organization and the of individual's ability to adapt and make those changes. Consequently, 
individuals are successful not because they have a certain style, but because they understand their own strengths. And er instead of weaknesses, I like to change that and say areas of improvement. I don't like the, I don't like the word weaknesses. So areas of improvement. Okay? And can identify the needs of others and help them meet their requirements. Personal leadership style. What we see is, there are many of them, but I, I broke it down to four, which is dominance, influence, steadiness, and compliance. You can internalize those messages and see where you fit in those patterns. And effective communication serves as a link between management functions and all company employees. That is something that goes around and around all the time. It's not here today and gone tomorrow. And mean that the member of the company know, everyone should know what's expected of them. If you do not know what's expected of you, you have the right to ask the question. Otherwise, how can you be critiqued? How can you be evaluated if you don't know what the expectations are that others have of you? Whether it's a verbal or a written communication, you earn the right to have that. And it shouldn't be once a year that you meet with your subordinates and people to talk to them about it. This should be ongoing. It's a friendly environment, not an adversarial environment. It's friendly as a leader, as a manager, to be this way, to think this way. And this is an open door. Keep those doors open. Don't sit behind closed locked doors all the time. It's not inviting. Have you ever been up to Bloomberg's headquarters? Have you ever been up to Google's headquarters, Microsoft? What do you see, the first thing? Open architecture. Everything is open. There are no closed doors. Mike Bloomberg himself, before he became mayor, had the open door policy. Now that he's back there, it's an open door policy. You walk around the floor, you can see Mike in his office, sitting next to a lot of other people. Focus on the following. Business is more complex today than ever before. It's more international today, more universal in what's taking place. There's more information than ever before, and we have to have ways to embrace that information to guide us accordingly. New technologies are available to drive that information through social media, through other channels that we see and hear all the time. And by the way, that data, that information, once it goes out, it's out there. You can't pull it back too easily, but it's out there. Um, interesting segue. I'm dealing with an organization, a new startup company, that raised the most significant round over a weekend on Indiegogo. Know what Indiegogo is? Sorry? Crowdfunding. They did this over a weekend. It was the largest raise ever. This happened three years ago of $1.4 million. Now they have 67 full-time employees in New York and growing appreciably, all because of the idea of three young men coming together and saying, this is ideal, let's put it together in a plan, let's sell the plan, and they have. And I'm seeing so many of these wonderful ideas. That's why I mentioned to go down to um, Dumbo and meet some of the people down there, which is a wonderful way to do this. Uh, there's a greater need to communicate with customers than ever before. Bruce said a little while ago that one of the events we're doing latter, in the latter part of this year is on being more effective and achieving excellence in customer service slash satisfaction. Learning this about ourselves today, learning this about how we can be more impactful in our subordinates and colleagues today will help us when we get to this relative to the clients, to the customers we're embracing. Because we come in in our own zealousness and wanting to tell our story. We want to tell them about who we are and our product or service. Leave that to the latter on. Let them know that you're interested in them. Let them know that you're interested in what they do. <clears throat> if they have a large office or a factory or whatever it is, ask them if you can walk around, if they can walk you around to just show you why. Because you're a visual. You want to see things happening rather than just read about it. Demonstrate your interest with sincerity. Do you know your existing customers? Have you asked them to walk around to see it? That demonstrates the leader in you, that you're taking charge. Everything else will happen later on, but today, ask them to walk around. It's not going to negatively impact your relationship with them, just the opposite. 
It'll be a wonderful addition. Habits that I've seen with effective leaders, difficult to pin down and understand, but you know a great leader when you're working for one. You know a great leader when one talks to you at the goal and objective level of you, of the company, of themselves. How they dialogue with you, how you feel afterwards. Do you have a leader today who you also would say is an excellent motivator? Do they motivate you to do things? Because if they don't, there might be something missing in the ingredients of his or her leadership. A leader needs to be an effective motivator, an effective listener, an outstanding communicator, supportive in every way. But primary, I feel a leader needs to be a role model and a motivator because if you're not motivated, you might not do the things that you'd like to do. They bring the best out in us. Courage, more attitudes, more behaviors. Courage, a leader has to have the courage to do things, to make a change, to make a difference. Effective communicator, that's who a leader really is. She or he needs to practice this and be part of it. They need to make the difference. Generosity, they have to demonstrate generosity, appreciation. You internalize this for yourselves now too. Also, humility. They don't allow their position or authority to make them feel that they're better than anyone else. Just the opposite. They're part of the team. They know their title. You know their title. They don't have to throw it on the wall every day in front of you. And certainly self-awareness. It's the foundation of emotional intelligence. Passion and enthusiasm. Infectiousness in what they do. Not to be infected by them, but infectiousness. Approachability. Are they easy to connect with? Are you easy to connect with? Everything I'm putting up here is a bullet point. I suggest you internalize and say, is this you? Is this who you would like to become? And if the answer is yes, I would like to become this, then don't leave here today and not knowing what to do. Speak to some of us. Speak to people around you. Because if we know what you want, then the chamber can put something together to help you get there. Isn't this a wonderful way to start on leadership and management, knowing there's an organization to support you that you signed up for? Just consider the value of what it brings to you. And accountability, don't try to shift the blame on others. He said, she said. Don't use expressions like you know. Take those words out of your vocabulary. You know, I know. Or maybe. No, more positive in your thinking is paramount to you. I will. I am. I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it happen rather than hope it's going to happen. At the end of the day, if it's going to be, say this to yourself, by the way. Say it silently to yourself, but believe in it. If it's going to be, it's up to me. When I talk about change, consider yourself as the agent of change. You can make it happen. Say to yourself, I can make it happen. I will. I can. I am. That's not ego. That's you as a leader and manager professing to be who you are today and what you want to be in the foreseeable tomorrow. And again, you have people around you who can support you on your journey to help you get there. Bring it all together. We spoke about a lot of things this morning. Bring it all together. And before I conclude, just two more things I'd like to share that are not up there. Years ago, there was something people spoke about relative to neuro-linguistic programming. Ever hear about it? Now, today, fashionably, it's called the process of self-talk. It's what do you say to yourself on the inside that exemplifies who you are on the outside. If you feel good about who you are, show it. If you feel excited, show it. If you feel that there's something that you'd like to do, talk about it. Don't hide it and believe, oh, maybe somebody else thinks about it, so I don't want to make a foolish comment or question. There is no such thing as a silly question. 
People go forward and say somebody else will think of it. There's no such thing as a silly question. Have an answer. Your value, it's your value system. Have somebody address those issues for you. Don't leave here today and say, well, this was good. This was refreshing. This was uplifting. Oh, I really liked it. But can you go back and now identify some of the things that you heard this morning, I hope, that help you make a difference? Because if it did and you don't do anything about it, shame on us. We didn't do our job. Yes, sir. No, Bruce, you got to wait one minute. <laughs> Bruce, you, you, Bruce, Bruce, you took four minutes of my time in the front end. So you, you're going you're, you're to have to give me another minute, Bruce. Because I, I wasn't speaking Mandarin. I wasn't speaking Tagalog. I was talking New York fast. That's a new language for today. All right. So strive not to be a success, but rather a value. Albert Einstein, I try to pick quotes out that connect with our conversation today. Believe you can, and you're halfway there. Teddy Roosevelt. I am not a product of my circumstances. I'm a product of my decisions, Stephen Covey. Whatever the mind of man or woman can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Napoleon Hill. Questions? OK, Bruce, questions. <laughs> questions. And no, 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 no. Any, I want to take three or four questions, and then we'll conclude. Go ahead. Sir. Uh, you haven't mentioned integrity. Integrity. That's within. Yes. It's all part of it, but it's a good word. It's, it's, it wasn't something that was an oversight, but it's yeah. there. Integrity is very important. It's something you own, something you show. Couldn't agree with you more. Very critical. Questions? OK, Bruce, the stage is yours, man. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> My two takeaways are the importance of listening and accepting criticism. But your takeaways, besides what you've learned from Mike, are the following. Because this is a chamber event. How many of you are not chamber members? Oh, that's good. Not too many. All right. Well, we hope you, that you will take advantage. Join us. There are a few ambassadors here. Reach out to us. We'll be happy to provide you with any information. Please remember to complete your evaluation forms. And we have something that we weren't planning, but we'd like to throw out. If you'd be interested in participating in a series of follow-up workshops on leadership with role play to practice what you learned today, please note that on the evaluation sheets. We will follow up with you, and maybe we'll have a nice series of events on leadership. Thank you all for company, coming. Thank you again, Mike. Thank every Ariana and Eisner Amper, and we hope to see you in June at our event on excellence in customer service. Thank you.